welcome back to my channel today we're doing part two of this uh, border collie tutorial real time tutorial last time we did the eye and part of the fur around the eye now i was going to keep going with the fur but we're going to go from um left to right and we're going to get this nose done today maybe a bit of the fur around the nose but we're going to focus on the nose we'll then focus on a bit of this white fur um, come around here and then we'll work our way down again all the materials that I've used will be listed in the description below we're sticking with the polychromos mainly the grey tones with the black dark sepia and dark indigo but yeah they'll all be listed below so I hope you find this helpful even if you just want to learn how to draw a dog's nose rather than following along with the tutorial Okay, so I've zoomed into the nose, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. I've uh, got my bit of paper to rest my hand on and we'll get started. So we're going to start off with the dark sepia as usual and I'm just going to come in and we're going to get some of these dark shapes mapped out. So this is like the nostril, the darker edges of the nose. So again, I do start with the dark sepia on the nose as usually um just to help map out everything very light pressure and again constantly looking back at my reference photo and flicking from the reference photo back to the drawing as i map out lightly just some of these dark shadows and the darker spaces that you can see This nose doesn't have a lot of texture on it, so we're going to be mainly be focusing on the tonal values rather than focusing on any texture that we can see within the nose. I have done a tutorial on a dog's nose where there's a lot of texture, um, so I'll have a card pop up if you want to follow that. It's time lapsed, so it's quicker um, than this video will be. Okay, so we've got the general shape of this side of the nose mapped in now. I'm just mapping in where I can see some of these dark shadows. When it comes to doing this part of the nostril, I'm going to curve my lines because we've got to make sure that this nose looks 3D and obviously we're curving into the nose. So I'm just using small lines and just following the shape of the nose making sure that my lines are following the curvature of the nose. And I'm just going to bring this up here. Like so. And then this part of the nose so it's not all dark in this nostril so you really focus on where these shadows are we're going to come in with a black later but we're just mapping in these dark parts and it's quite dark along the outside edge here so all i'm doing is just constantly flicking back to my reference photo and just drawing the shapes that I can see. This is going to be darker here. Darker there. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my black because I know that this part of the nose in the middle um, is going to be particularly dark. Now, this part of the nose is usually quite dark anyway. Um, I'm not going in pressing with hard pressure it's not a black black um, but we're just going to mark it out so then when we start building up the layers we know where this part of the nose is so we, ca we can kind of see we've got a, sort of the shape of the nose really coming together we know where some of the darker highlights are uh, dark shadows sorry um, and where we'll get the highlights in at the top of the nose so I'm going to start to the left hand side of the nose because it's quite dark there um, and I'm just going to add as usual a base layer so I'm just doing a cold grey one smooth out part of this tooth and I'm going to go back in with the uh, dark sepia and I'm just going to slowly darken this up again following this curvature 
we want this to look like it's curving into this nostril. And then here's quite a harsh line because obviously the dog is to the profile. We're drawing the profile of this dog. So that bit there is quite harsh. And then we're just going to blend it into here. I'm then going to get, I'm so just darken this bit up, my Payne's Grey. So Payne's Grey is going to be quite used quite a lot in this nose. And I'm just going to blend it over that dark sepia and up here. And we will have to keep darkening this till we've got the contrast that we want. But we're just slowly building up this side of the nostril. I'm going to get the dark indigo as well along this edge. And back with the dark sepia along this bottom. And remember, every time I'm just making sure that I'm blending these colours together. This part of the nose is quite smooth, so we don't want the texture as such. But don't worry if you don't get the nose as smooth as the fur blended out, because there is going to be texture on the nose, so it doesn't matter if you bring in a little resemblance of that texture. So I'm just swapping between the dark sepia to the Payne's Grey, just to darken up this area again. I'll then come in with the black and the areas that really need to be dark with the shadows, like inside this nostril. Just going to come in with harder pressure with this black just to really show that this is a shadow along the bottom here as well. Like that. Okay, then um, we'll get the... Um, Cold grey again, and I'm just going to apply this as a base layer um, along this edge down here. Just want this line to be a bit sharper. So I mean, I am using really sharp pencils as well. Remember, we're on the Fabriano. If you're using the smooth paper, you need sharp pencils. Um, I'm then going to go in with the dark indigo very lightly with the dark indigo and I'm just going to add a very thin layer I'm using circular motions so I'm doing that motion again like we did on the eye just to build up this nose I'm going to bring in the dark sepia and just darken here and then Add a very layer here this is the dark sepia and then I'm going to get the cold grey 6 and I'm just going to blend over, over that layer that we've just done with the dark indigo with the cold grey 6 and I'm making sure that I'm curving it out from this nostril so it's coming up and over. Still wanting this 3D effect. And again, curving it and doing it sideways, sideways lines. Um, just to show that this nose is going into that nostril there. So you're always looking, when you're doing a 3D, like 3D object, look at the shapes and look at how you can draw those shapes to make the impression that this is 3D. Like so. So I'm just going back in with my cold grey one. I'm just going to add this base layer across the top of this nose. Doing it about halfway. I'd, I, you can cover the whole um, nose if you want in your base layer. But I like to do it part by part. Just so I know which section I'm working on. Um, otherwise I, just, I find I get a little confused when I've got too much um, base layer down. Again you don't need to um, add as much base layer as I've done. Going back in with a dark sepia. I'm just going to darken here. Doing it this way as well. I work in sections, so I'm coming back and forth between areas just to darken up um, anything that needs to be darkened. Just adding this 
dark sepia and I'm going to add it along this edge. Get the dark indigo. Again, very lightly. Over the top. The Col Grey Six. So it's all this is literally just all about building up your layers, going back and forth between the colours that you've previously used just to help darken it and get those tonal values that you want. Now if I was using a bit of luminance with this portrait, I would probably come in along the edge of this nose with the sepia 10%. Um it has a bit of a purplish tone. And the sepia 10% would work perfectly. Okay, I'm going to get the Payne's Grey along here. You see how we're getting a bit of texture on this nose just by doing these circular motions. Right, we'll go back in with the dark sepia. And obviously the Fabriano does let you add a lot of layers, which really does help. I like to build up the layers very slowly and gently um, and repeat these layers just to intensify some of those colours that I can see. But again, this is just this is just how I do it. You you can do it whatever way you want. I just find this works for me and the style that I want my work to look like. So it's a way of me me showing you how I work, but you can adapt my techniques to the way that um, you want to work. So we've got this top half of the nose done. So I'm going back in with the dark sepia and we're going to get this nostril in place just so that we can work on this side of the nose and get all these values correct. Now, when you're doing noses, more so when they're face onto you, the top of the nostrils are going to line up. So when I'm working on it this way, this nostril is more or less going to line up with this one. Um, if they don't line up, you know that the dog's sniffing. Usually it looks okay in a photo, but for a drawing, I would um, make sure that everything lines up and is straight on. So we're just going to come in with these curved lines again. It's going to be darker in here, so I'm just going to do like so. So I'm quite excited to see how this piece looks when it's finished. I think it's going to be a nice piece. And I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope I'm giving you some sort of insight into how I work and get all these subtle values coming through. I know we've only done part one so far. Hopefully, you're still getting a bit of an insight. And I know I'm quite slow and very short strokes, but I've had a few of you ask how, how I work and my work being quite subtle. So hopefully, this does give you that bit of insight. I'm going to come in with the black because I know it's quite dark here. So you've got to really, really make sure now when you're coming in with this dark black that you are really flicking back and forth between your reference photo and your drawing because not all of this nostril is really really dark so we need to keep an eye on that just making sure that this all curves upwards that's going to come down here so this is quite Use the dark sepia where the black isn't. Um, may come in if you've got the Derwent Ivory black where you want some darker blacks. Um, I would use that. Um, so I may use that just to really darken some of these blacks. But don't worry if you don't have it. Um, like I say, you don't need the exact pencils that I use. Use whatever you've got. The main the main thing when you're trying to do realism is you don't really want to focus on the colours as such. 
you want to focus on your values so you want your darks to be dark so like here i need to really darken this nostril um and your lights to be light and it's having that contrast that's really going to help you with your realism right i'm just going to come in and do the base layer now of this cold gray one about halfway down again and then across the top of this nose this is pressing not too hard but hard enough to flatten some of the tooth so that we can work on top remember if you press too hard straight away you won't be able to get loads of layers on top you'll have completely um filled the tooth of the paper which we don't want to do right i'm going to come back in with my dark sepia if i can find where i put it and i'm just going to start blend so i'm going over the black and then blending the sepia up and over show this curvature here and again here i think i'm going to go in with the one gray five um i'm just going to add some of this warm gray again circular motions no, don't press too hard um if you're struggling with pressure remember you can hold the pencil higher up um when you press higher when you hold the pencil higher up you're less likely to be able to press really really hard on the paper um, and the more confident you get you'll be able to like hold it lower down like i do and still get a nice light pressure i'm just going to add this across here right i'm going to add the dark indigo so all i'm doing is i'm just looking at my drawing and my reference photo all the time and just adding these colors that i can see I'm not focusing on the detail just adding the colors and then the paint's grey. Across there, right. And then back in with a warm grey five. And you can see by doing this circular motion, I'm starting to get some texture on this nose. So that I probably won't go in and add any further texture because there isn't much texture on the reference photo to be seen. So we'll just let the pencils add the texture themselves gonna add there is a bit of a purplish hue so i've got the uh, purple violet and the polychromos and i'm just gonna very lightly over the top again if you've got the sepia 10 percent luminance i would use that um but like i say i'm gonna just keep it to the polychromos set um for ease just over where i can see that bit purple Um, okay, and then just the warm grey five again. Go back over that purple tone. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the dark indigo along this edge again. don't worry about adding detail if the detail's not there it's uh, it's not there you just add the tonal values that's what's going to help bring your piece um to look realistic then got the panes gray i'm just going to bring this along the edge you can see how this is now looking like it's curving into that nostril Gray again. I've then got the cold grey five, um, and I'm just going to come over with the cold grey five now. Again, remember you can 
just draw whatever colours you see. Just because I'm seeing like all these greys and purples. There's even greens in the snows, but I'm probably not going to add the greens. Just because I see all these colours doesn't mean that you will. Just add the colours that you see. You might not see purple, you might see pink. Uh, you might see more blues than I'm seeing. Um, so don't f don't feel like you can't add these colours that you're seeing. Add, add them. Just remember to use light pressure. Um, make the piece your own. I'd love to see how you incorporate colours that maybe I'm not seeing. Or even using a, a limited palette. Um, it'd be really good to see. This is the warm grey 5 and then I'm going to come back in with the Payne's grey. So it is quite, it is a slow process. Um, what I do is very slow to build up the layers. I know some people may have had their nose done by now, but I like to spend time, especially on the eyes and nose, um, just to slowly build it up. Right, we've got a line here. So I've got the warm grey 5. I may go in with a dark sepia there. There is a bit of a texture line there and here. Again, I'm not really worried about being texture, it's just the colours that I can see. Um, and then one grey five there. Um, I'm going to go in with colour grey four. Just in this corner here. And now it's just again about building up the layers. So I've got the dark sepia. I'm just going to darken the, these texture. It's going to look like texture. So and blend along this edge. Um, and then go back in with the Cogre 5. Okay, I'm going to go back in with a purple violet here. Just want a bit more of this purpley tone coming through. Okay, and then I'm just going to come back in with a black, and I just want this to really be darkened up, blend. Uh, the Payne's Grey, just going to start to sm try and smooth this out a bit more, it's not as blended as I would like. Now again, if you feel like your nose is where you're happy with it, the top of this nose, feel free to stop. Don't need to keep adding layers like I do. Um, I like to really build up a lot of layers, but again... You don't need to. The Fabriano, I'm using the Fabriano 600 GSM, so it does allow me to add a lot of layers, um, which, of course, you don't need to add as many. It's just a guide. This is, this is all this is. This is just a guide to try and help you. Learn some new techniques that you can apply within your own work. Just coming in with the warm grey six along here. I'm just going to gently outline. No, I don't want too harsh a line. I'm not worried about being a harsh line, but I just to outline here a little bit more. And then this corner here. This is still the cold grey six, and this is where it's going to start blending into the fur. But it's still got part of the nose there. And that's curving down. Okay, let's get the base layer in the bottom of this nose. So when I'm doing this base layer, I'm, s I'm following the curvature still of the nose. So it's constantly looking back and forth at your reference photo and just follow that curvature. And 
that's coming. So I think I'm just going to use the um, in this corner. I'm just going to go over that bit of the cold grey one uh, and use warm grey two here. This is more of a warm tone rather than it being cool. Just in that little bit there, um, and then yeah, cold grey one here. And this part of the nose here. Okay, so we're getting there now. This nose is coming together nicely. Okay, so we're going to start with this side of the nose and then come across again. So we're going to go back in with a dark sepia. Um, first of all, I'm just going to darken this section again. And then any of the dark shadows that you can see, I'm just going in with a dark sepia. And mapping them out first. A bit more pressure than we initially used when we first started the nose and that's curving into the nose there. It's coming up. And then I'm going to use the dark indigo. Um, Payne's grey. So this part of the nose is just more about following the shape. There's not as much textures going on here in this particular nose. Um, I'm following the shadows, making sure I'm getting those shadows in place. Um, but this part of the nose is fairly quick to um, build up the layers. I'm also using straighter lines rather than the circular motions. I find the bottom of the nose I tend to use more lines rather than the circles whereas the top it's more circular motions just to follow the shape of the nose as well as the textures that I'm seeing okay, I'm going to go back in with a dark sepia and just darken up those bits that I need to be darker they're not quite black but I may come in and just glaze over with a black So I'm just going to get the warm grey 5 and just glaze over. Just needs to be a little warmer. I'm just going to get the black in the middle here, in this corner. Coming out this nostril here. So I'm still making sure that I'm getting the shape of this nostril. And the shape of the nose. I know I repeat myself a lot, like you're constantly looking at the shapes, but on the reference photo, back and forth, but that is what it is. Just constantly flicking back and forth, looking at the reference photo and drawing the shapes. Uh, like so, so that's that part of the nose. I think I'm just going to come in with a warm grey two here a minute, um, just to smooth out this little bit. I found the warm grey two is quite good for smoothing out and blending, um, like so. Okay, we're back onto this side of the nose now. So going in with the dark sepia. And um, again, just following the shapes that I can see that are in shadow. And just mapping them out with a dark sepia. Quite a bit of brown in this side of the nose. You may have to get maybe the walnut brown in. So a dark, if you've got a dark brown, get um, maybe a bit of dark brown going on in this nose part here. Right, and then this is curving. Oops. 
So, okay, I'm gonna get the uh, dark indigo and very lightly along here. Um, and I'm gonna get a uh, paint grey. Paints grey is quite a bluish tone anyway, so you you could use it without the dark indigo. I just like the the mixture of the two. Um, I find works really well. Um, but again, just use whatever you've got. Um, this is the cold grey six. Just in again. So all these cool tones are quite bluish, which are giving you that bluish coloured nose. Just making sure that it all blends nicely together. Okay, we do have this now um, more of a highlighted area. So I'm going to find my walnut brown first. So I'm just going to use my walnut brown very lightly. Um, sort of in the edges here. So this is probably a step that you, you don't have to include, but I can see this like brownish tone, a bit of purple as well. I'm just going to add this brown, walnut brown. I'm going to come in with the uh, purple violet over the top of that brown as well. So this is just a part where if you see any colours, um, add them. If you don't see the colours, you don't need to add them. <laughs> okay, I'm going to come back in with my dark sepia and I'm just going to start to darken these highlight, uh, highlights, these shadows. I hope you're enjoying following along with this. If you are following along or that, that you're learning, um, even just techniques about high finish areas and what I look for. Uh, do let me know. Bit near the end of this nose now. Okay, and we're going to go in with the warm grey free, um, and we're going to curve the line here because it's coming out of this nostril. And it's curving round. Okay, and then I'm going to get the dark indigo. I'm just going to darken. Paint's grey. So it is mainly the same colours over the whole section of the nose. Just following the shapes and the direction that the nose is going in, just to build it up. Um, it's going to curve around here. Actually, let's get the one grey five. This might be easier. Yeah. Oh, I'm grey five. You see how now we're getting the shape of this nose? Paint's grey here because this is the dark shadow. We want it to stay dark. And then just blend that. You can also use your, if you get this area too dark straight away, you can go in with your putty eraser and just lighten it all up. Um, which I may do um, once I've done this part. We'll see. See if we need to go in with the putty eraser and just lift a bit of pigment.
Um, I'm just going to get the cold grey six now. Back to the dark sepia, and I'm just making sure I'm mapping out all the shapes, giving that definition to this nostril. Even though this part does blend out nicely, we still have a bit of definition that we can see. So we need to make sure we don't lose that definition. And back in with a warm grey five. Here I would actually probably use the sepia again from the luminance just to help with the blending. I find the luminance are good for your blending. Um, get the warm grey too. This will just help here. See how it's just like smoothing everything over. It's really nice to the warm grey too. Right, I'm just going to go back in with a black. I'm just going to really darken some of these areas that need to be darker. Don't press too harshly with the black um, when you're doing these shadow areas. You don't want this bit to be black. You want the colours underneath to come through. So I'm just lightly adding the black to just darken these areas. I'm just going to darken down here as well. And this area needs to be just a bit darker. So we use the dark sepia for the it's not black, it's just this like sepia colour. <laughs> just blend them bits together again. Warm grey five. Okay, this corner of the nose now, so I'm going to get the warm grey, do I have the warm grey? Do I want warm grey? Yes. Um, I'll stick to the warm grey 5. could use the warm grey 4, but I'm just going to lightly use this warm grey 5 here. And this bit is going to blend into the first. I'm just going to get the warm grey 2. Uh, not one grey free, sorry. Um, and this bit here is going to start blending into your fur. So I'm starting to create these fur lines. And this is where the nose meets the fur. Just get the black. Grey six. You can see now how it just looks like it's going into the um into the fur. So we'll start adding some of the fur around the nose. So I'm gonna just lighten some of this graphite. Uh, this is the warm grey two, and I'm just gonna come in under here and add this as a base layer and again when we're doing the fur it's all about following the fur direction and the fur around the nose is quite short so I'm using shorter pencil lines just get rid of this graphite Quite dark around here, but that's fine. This is just the base layer.
Okay. So I'm going to go over the top of that with a warm grey worn, um, just to really smooth this out. I don't want it to be any darker than warm grey too, I don't think, um, on this edge especially. And I'm not worried about this being a straight edge. Um, I am letting the warm grey one go over it and just kind of blend it softly, but not too much, just along the edge here. Okay, and then the inside of um, here, we're going to just start with a sepia and I'm just going to start adding some of these lines that are coming down from the nose. So this is really going to make the nose look like it's set in place on this dog's face. Um, and then we're going to use one grey five and I'm just going to follow the shape of all this fur in the fur direction. I'm just going to add some of this. Coming down. And again, this is just a lot of repeating, a lot of um, adding the same colours. Um, just get the cold grey for it's a bit cooler. Now, one of the colours that I do like to add in my work are the metallics in the polychromos range. Um, so I think I'll show you how I do that with this part of the mouth because um, I can see some of the colours that I would like to use. Um, and it is one of the things I incorporate a lot within my work. So just adding a bit of this cold. Just a bit of purple in there as well. So I'm just going to get this purple violet. I'm just going to... Um, and then I've got the light flesh, and I'm just going to lightly, so this is all the colours that I can see, remember, if you don't see them, don't add them. Uh, this is just what I see. Okay, so what I've got here is, I've got the um, copper um, in the polychromos, and just along the bottom, I'm just going to not press hard, but very lightly. Add this copper. And then I'm going to go over with the uh, Payne's Grey. Just add in some of these darker hairs that I can see now. And that will go over the top of the copper and you'll get a nice, just this nice colour that comes from the copper. Um, I just find that the coppers mixed with the greys, real the copper and the gold especially, mixed with the greys work really well. And give you a, to a nice tonal value. So this is just the detail now that I'm adding. So just those extra bits of hair. So before we were just adding like the tones in the direction, but we were adding the tones. And now I'm coming in and just adding detail with the Payne's Grey. So a few of these individual hairs that we can see. I'm just going to darken by this nose a little bit more. Get the dark sepia for that. Um, yeah, that's the dark sepia. Dark down here as well. It's going into the mouth. And this is the cold grey five. Now we do have whiskers to add, but I like to add the whiskers at the end. So we're not going to add them just yet. If you want to add them, add them, but I like to add them at the end. I'm just going to get the cinnamon. Actually, let's get the copper. If we go in with the copper here again. And then I'll just go over with the warm grey free. 
blend this bit and then just add that definition back into that bit of fur like so so you can see we're starting to get this resemblance of this face i'm just going to come in with a cold gray one So you can see now how we're starting to get the bit of the fur coming around this nose. So I've got the uh, warm grey one um, as a base layer. We'll just add a bit of the fur around here. Um, we won't do all the fur because um, we'll do this white fur as a, com as a section on its own, um, especially where it starts to transition into the black fur. Um, but I just want this nose to look like it's really set in place. So just going in with a warm grey. Um, I've got the walnut brown because I can see the brown, so I'm just going to... Again, I'm looking at the fur direction, making sure that my pencil strokes are similar length to the fur and that they're going in the correct direction. Um, and then the warm grey five. Oh, that's not warm grey five. Warm grey five. And the dark sepia just to get this nice blend now. And the nose into this fur. Um, and that's, this is the warm grey five again. Um, and then I'm just going to get the cold grey free, um, just lightly along here, and then the warm grey one, just to set this nose in place. And that warm grey one is going to blend into a cold grey one, so I'm just going to raise that graphite line. Um, so I'm, I'm just using the putty rubber to lift up. And then I'm going to get this cold grey one very lightly along here. Uh, and then I've, if you get your white, um, and we're just going to use the white to burnish because um, this area is not too dark. So I'm just going to burnish, just blend these, really smooth that tooth out. Do the same here as well, actually. It's really burnish along here. Um, and there we go. We have a nose that is getting set into place with fur. Um, so I hope that's helped. We've uh, now drawn the nose and the eye of this dog. Let me zoom you out. So there we go. We have the nose and the eye in place now. Um, the next part of the tutorial, we will start on the white fur and coming up here with some of the black fur. Um, it may, may be not as long as a tutorial because once I start describing what I'm doing with the fur I may speed up some sections as a time lapse because a lot of it as you can see is repetition it's adding colours layer by layer over and over again um, once we've done a bit of this fur um, we will start doing the mouth um, which is quite a complicated area so that will be real time um, I'll talk you through step by step the tongue, the gums, the teeth um, but yeah, I hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far, um, or that you're learning how to draw noses, eyes. If there's any questions, let me know in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, it really helps my channel. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye everybody.